Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Now, if y'all follow any of my other blogs or my videos, you'll know I'm a whiskey drinker. I usually have friends over. We try a lot of different whiskeys, see which ones we like, and have some commentary. So what I thought I'd do today is make a whiskey sampling board. So I picked up these really cool three ounce whiskey glasses. Um, they're pretty slick, fairly inexpensive, so I'm liking that. But at three ounces, they're pretty big. So we aren't gonna be filling these puppies up. So I'm gonna take this whiskey barrel stave, and basically, let's do a quick layout here. I want about two fingers, which is about an inch and a half roughly, and then about three fingers between each, which is about two, two and a quarter inches. And two on the end. So let's make a quick mark. You want to have enough room so you can grab these. It might be a little further apart than I'd like. Let's see. I'll use my other finger, which isn't bent and broken. Bring them a little closer together. And that saved me an inch. Let's see how long that is and how much room I actually need out of this. So that's about 12, 13 inches. Now I'm going to go with three. And I'm going with three for a reason. Like I said, these are three ounces. If you're putting one ounce in each of these, that flight is going to be uh, probably a little more than three ounces. Generally, you're going to be about four to six ounces. And that's a lot of whiskey to be drinking, um, especially if you think you're going to be driving or anything. So drink responsibly, folks. So I'm going to do three. So I'm going to cut this off here at 13 inches. And then I'm going to come back and drill a couple of holes with my Forstner bit. And that Forstner bit's going to be two inches because these are just under two inches. These are about an inch and seven eighths. So that should give me enough room. I'm going to use my drill press because what that's going to do is once this thing's done, is it's going to give me a, a hole that's perpendicular, not like per square to the uh, surface, but straight to the world. I don't really want to see my glasses leaning when I'm drinking, if you know what I mean. So, why don't we get busy? I'll put links in the bottom for the materials I use and some of the tools I use. Check those out. Matter of fact, while you're at it, do me a favor, hit, hit subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And hit like on this. And uh, let's start making. So cross-cutting these uh, barrel staves, you'll notice how much curvature there is to these. And not only do they curve this way, they also curve this way. So basically around the Z and the, uh, and the Y axis. Makes it a little tough to cut them safely. And whatever you do, make sure you have safety in mind. So what I've done here, radial arm saw, I set a block at 11 and a half inches. I did a little more calculation on these and they're 35 inches long. So I wanted to get three of them out uh, and then take out of course an eighth of an inch uh, per cut with the uh, blade. It gave me about 11 and a half inches. Um, it's gonna give me about an inch on the ends and then between the glasses of uh, 1.75 or one and three quarter inches, which is five eighths less than what I, my, my fingers. So should be good. I was doing some layout work. Looks easy to get into. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Make sure when you're cutting these, if you're using, especially if you're using a chop saw or a uh, compound miter saw that you've uh, appropriately supported this. If not, the blade can bind and bad things can happen. So, let's make some noise. So you can see how easy that lays out, about an inch on the ends, inch and three quarters between, plenty of room to grab them. You don't have to stumble around too much. So we're pretty well set there. I got to hit these with some uh, sandpaper around the edges to make them nice and soft, and then uh, drop the holes in and we should be good. The other thing we have to do to these, if you'll notice, this rocks a little. So one thing we want to do is the bat these bottoms bottom edges. We want to uh, come in here with a hand plane or a jointer 
and basically flatten off about, take off about a, 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 a 3 16 to a quarter inch off here to give it a nice flat spot to rest on so it doesn't, isn't rocking around. You don't want your drinks rocking too much. So, so that's another thing we gotta do. Well, let's keep working. So that took care of all three of these pretty quick. They're nice and flat, nice and stable. Now we have to go drill some holes. So I've had to mark each one of these individually. I don't know if you can see that in here. I've actually put a punch hole through all uh, four of these, three in each. And the reason is, is these are actually tapered. So they all had to be measured individually and individually marked. That means they're all gonna have to be individually drilled also. But I have this one centered, ready to go. So let's get started. So there we go, 3 16 of an inch at the low side. I want that because it captures the glass and keeps it from moving around. You can see that two inches is just about perfect exactly where I want it to be, so it doesn't move too much. So let's keep drilling. And there we go. That looks beautiful. Let's finish all the rest of them up. So if you follow my other videos on barrel stave stuff that I've used, you know that I've already knocked off all the char before they come into the uh, shop. And I hit it with a coat of uh, varnish just to make sure it's all sealed so I don't get all that dirty, nasty crap all over. Next step I have here is I'm gonna take the sand, uh, 60 grit sandpaper just to knock off the dirt and then I'll go to 220. I don't want to knock off the patina though, so I have to be very careful not to do that. Otherwise, it'll end up looking like that, which is nice, but that's not what I want. I want that barrel character. So, we're gonna start sanding. All right, I moved to 220. All I'm gonna do now is hit these edges, because they're pretty sharp and splintery at the moment. Let's round all the edges on this thing everywhere so it's nice and soft. Okay, everything's sanded up. These corners are feeling nice and smooth. Uh, any, if you're doing this and you feel anything that's not smooth, come back with a little bit of sandpaper and hit it again. But you wanna make sure that's nice and smooth so when someone picks it up, it feels good in their hand. Next thing we wanna do is we want to go ahead and hit this with some stain. I'm using Minwax Special Dark Walnut. The reason is, is it's dark enough to bring this uh, to a darker look, so it gives it a more even, uh, older antique look. And after I'm done with that, I'll hit it with some uh, varnish and then we'll be good to go. Well, this project turned out really well. You saw where I put on the stain, that the uh, nice dark finish gives it that, that antique oak look. I hit it with three coats of uh, polyurethane. I wiped that on and hit, hit it with 320 in between. So this is nice and smooth. Wow, nice and smooth. They sit really nice because I've taken the bottoms and flattened them out a little bit. All right, you can see how the, how the glasses look. What I like about these glasses, by the way, is they're tapered. So they stack really easily, and they look really good, to be honest with you. And again, three ounces. So 
about the right size. You can see here, I've added some whiskey to this. That's about eh, three quarters of an ounce. Looks good. That's what we're going for. So I have three whiskeys here. All right, remember, first of all, let's go back, drink responsibly. I have Old Scout, which has kind of been my go-to for a long time. I have this Mitchers, and I also have Traverse City. All right, Traverse City uh, whiskey is pretty, pretty decent. So let's try these real quick. I like that, because that's one I've been going with. A little bit sweeter. Um, I like, I kind of like the finish on it, the end notes. Now this I really like. The reason I like Traverse City, okay, is because, well, first of all, hometown, right? My wife grew up in Traverse City, but it has, it's kind of sweet and has a really nice end, end notes and finish. So while I'll drink the other two, this is probably gonna be my preferred go-to whiskey going forward. Anyway, you can kind of see what these things look like. Hopefully you got a chance to, to uh, think about this project and I'd like to see you do it. If you do, do me a favor and post it in my, uh, my Facebook page. That would be pretty cool. And uh, remember, drink responsibly. If you want a uh, dimension sketch of this, go below and find my blog. In that blog, there's a dimension sketch you can use, all right? These are basically, it's a 30, 35 inch barrel stave. I cut three pieces out at 11 and a half roughly and drop three holes in it. You can make them longer if you wanna have an extra one. Uh, I don't personally recommend it, three is plenty, but you can do your own thing. These are 3 sixteenths, uh, right, to a quarter inch deep. Easy to drop in with a two inch Forstner bit. And so if you go to the bottom, you also find tools that I use, those kind of things. And uh, hey, hope you had fun watching. If you did, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. Appreciate that a lot. And uh, hey, until next time, folks, good making.